Uh, you know, thought, uh, you know, proud of our guys. Thought first half was, uh, you know, was was our best half of the year for sure. Um, thought we were locked in defensively. Thought we, uh, you know, really, really played with uh, great pace, execution, um, you know, on the offensive end and thought we made, you know, uh, we're really flying around and, and, and made uh, life difficult on them on the defensive end and uh, opened up, obviously, a, a, a big lead at half. And I thought um, early second half, uh, we came out and um, traded baskets early. wasn't thrilled with our defensive energy early and then thought we stabilized and, and, uh, and then last, whatever, 11, 12 minutes kind of, you know, obviously devolved in a little bit of pickup basketball both ways. But, um, you know, wasn't wasn't thrilled with our defensive in intensity there the, down the stretch and our, our offensive execution kind of went away. But um, it was great to, to you know, to, to see us do that for, uh, you know, for, for 20 minutes and then some spurts there in the, in the second half. But obviously you want to be able to sustain it for 40 and, uh, um, you know, build on that. But, you know, great win against a terrific program, North Dakota State's think, you know, has won 20 plus games here last, you know, four years and, and uh, is a perennial, you know, contender there in the summit. And, and they've got a, they've got a good basketball team and they'll win a lot of games this year. Um, they've got a lot of talent. So um, proud of our guys and um, looking forward to, to playing against a really good East Carolina team on Monday. Coach, that start, that first half, have you seen that the last few days in practice? Did you see this coming and how focused and dialed in your guys are right now? Yeah, no, we we stunk the last three days in practice. So, <laughs> so. I did not see that coming. Uh, no, we, we stunk in practice. So we were, uh, I was a little worried about uh, how we were going to come out. I didn't think our, our preparation was, was quite as good as need to be. Um, but uh, but they, they, were, they were ready to go. I mean, part of it too, I think, with, with, with our team is, is uh, they're tired of playing against each other. You know, they're, they're looking forward to playing other people. I mean, the, the, the preseason, you know, you start in June. I mean, it's a long time and they play each other a lot. So um, got to keep practice fresh, got to keep it short for them. Um, you know, their, their, their attention spans at this point are, are pretty much gone. So uh, the more games, the better. I think tonight starts four games in six days. That's about up their alleyway right now. They want to play other people and compete inside the games, you know, more than uh, listen to me and, and watch, you know, and, and, and talk about practice. So um, they're, they're excited about this stretch. And, but they came out from the jump, and, and I thought they're, uh, everything we want to do defensively from a game plan standpoint, you know, they were locked in. And offensively, I thought our, our pace and execution and, and discipline was, was at, at a really high level there. That was first half was, was by far the best we've played this year. I go in here. Uh, my question is going to revolve around the two guys that just left the room. Uh, they had a stretch there in the second half where they seemed like they scored pretty much every basket in a row. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. those guys are just uh, two just phenomenal scorers. Uh, what's it like and how easy is it for, uh, to kind of just revolve an offense around them, especially when they're hot like tonight? I mean, uh, again, there was a stretch there. I, I think they scored like 14 or 15 in a row combined. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, how much how much of a weight off your back does it take when you have two guys that can fill it full like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, for sure. It's uh makes you look a lot smarter as a coach when you got guys like that out there playing you look you look uh you know uh, there's there's uh makes makes my job a lot easier you're not calling plays you're just letting those guys play and when you got guys like uh like Coop and Voss that can uh you know go basically uh you know create baskets and and um uh, can can make some of the plays they're making. It's it's you know it's it's really good. And I'll say this, you know their teammates did a great job of finding them as well. You know the way they kind of shared the ball and got them the ball in, in their sweet spots was 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 terrific. And uh, you know because uh, and but those guys are really really gifted offensive players. And um, Coop's kind of finding his his way here the last two games. I thought you know the first you know Tusculum and Green Bay, you know he's trying to kind of find his, his rhythm with these you know with a different team and in, in a different role. But like we talked about, um, you know, I think for Coop, um, you know, less can be more. And, uh, you know, having less on his plate can actually make him a more efficient and better player. And for Voss, uh, I think it's just, um, you know, he's a guy that uh, is, is just kind of wired like to, to score. I mean, it's just, I said that back in St. Louis, you know, we were back in, in media day in September. I said, you know, everybody's talking about uh, Henry and, and Coop returning who, you know, we're all league guys and averaged 15 and 14 last year. And I said, you know, I thought Cabassier would lead us in scoring. And uh, people were like, ah, oh, yes, you know, but I, you know, I mean, it wasn't saying the negative on those guys. It's just, you know, it's, he's just wired to score in our system. Um, you know, he, he, he thrives in it. And, and that's, that's a big thing. I mean, we've talked about this before, but, um, you know, 
good player in the right system is a great player. Good player in a, the wrong system is a bad player. And uh, Boss for our system is a great fit and, and, and is a great player within what we do. And um, But both those guys were, were fantastic tonight for sure. Coach, I just want to say quick things. Like, I love the fact that this team is really just having a lot of fun. I mean, just the vibe on campus right now with both the men's team, the women's team going off, doing great things to yep. early in the season. Um, going into Florida, I just mm -hmm. want to ask you quick thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your intentions? What's going to go on down there? How do you think it's going to play out? Yeah, um, well, I think, you know, yeah, the, the vibe is really good. I, I told, uh, you know, obviously we got we got a technical foul for Julian hugging Boss after a made three on the court, which I've never had before. But I told him if we're going to get a technical foul, that's that's probably one I'll accept because that's uh, I'll, you know we talk about enjoying each other's success. Probably not that much, but that's a crossing a line. But but uh, but that was an extreme example of enjoying each other's success. But uh, uh, no, it's a great vibe and. and uh, um, what Chad and the girls program has done is is phenomenal. Those the, the girls have looked amazing, and uh, we're here last night watching them. Uh, you know, blow out Central Michigan, and they've they've been they've been unbelievable. Their first two games come back over St. Louis, and that was a thriller. And then and then obviously uh, handled business yesterday. So um, both teams off to a great start, and and obviously that's that's what you want. So hopefully it creates a good atmosphere, and and the and the electricity in the building from the fans has has made it you know just just so much better. And I think the the atmosphere and environment this year compared to last year is night and day. So um, in terms of Florida, um, you know, it, it's it's you know, you want to obviously it's nice to get out of this weather. So we'll we'll enjoy we'll enjoy that aspect. Um, but it's a business trip, right? Three games in three days. Um, it's a great tournament. I think people um, when they look at tournaments, uh, people tend to get enamored with, you know, what high majors they are, what power six. Um, this field is 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 fantastic, and uh, we're going to be challenged at the highest level. We start with Monday with East Carolina, who's undefeated, um, also three and zero. In our side of the bracket is Toledo, who's undefeated, and arguably, you know, probably the top mid major in the country right now by most people's estimation. Um, you got UMKC on the side. The other side of the bracket, um, you've got uh, Florida Gulf Coast, who went in and beat you know USC up in Southern California. They went uh, Northern Kentucky, beat Cincinnati last night. So you've got some elite mid-major teams competing in Florida. Uh, and three games in three days is, is an unbelievable test. Uh, but I think our team's built for that, right? I mean, uh, we've got depth. we got guys who love to compete. I think, um, you know, uh, they're looking forward. They're, they're, they're a group that's super competitive. So uh, I think, um, you know, we'll take tomorrow film day. Uh, not practice, and then uh, we'll, we'll practice in Florida Saturday and Sunday, and then uh, be ready to tee it up uh, Monday. The guys will, I'm sure, not be thrilled about practicing uh, Saturday, uh, you know, Saturday, Sunday, but they'll get through it, and we'll be ready to go on Monday against East Carolina. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, Voss says that he left you on a 32-game winning streak, so does that mean you're like 36 in a row with him? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he uh, he did leave me on a 32-game winning streak. So, and then and then uh, in in my defense, we went to the Final Four next year, and he finished last. So, uh, just so we're just so we're 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 on the same page as what happened. So, uh, no, but listen, great players make great coaches. Voss is it is true. We've won I think whatever 35, 36 in a row together, and uh, uh, he's he's not only a, a great player. I think it, you, you can lose it with Voss sometimes because he's. He, he plays, but he, he's so passionate and he's such a great competitor. He really is. Like, he's a phenomenal competitor and he's a great teammate. Like, um, you know, the Ball State game with four minutes to go, uh, I called a timeout for the sole purpose of taking him out of the game. Um, and it was crunch time, it was a pretty close game. And he was the guy on the bench standing up cheering his teammates. He wasn't in there in the last four minutes of the game in crunch time. He was up cheering his teammates on. Tonight he gets 30. With his team, it's going to be different guys, different nights. You know, who knows? But uh, but um, he is he a is great player, great competitor, great teammate. And uh, I'm so happy he's having, you know, success he is because, you know, he, he deserves it. He deserves it. He really is. He's, uh, you know, he's a... He works his tail off, so I'm thrilled to see him. Him, you know, having the type of year he's having, and I think he's, you know, he's a guy that has the the, the, the game and the mentality to sustain it. Coach, you talk about your offense a lot, or people should say mm -hmm. talk about your offense a lot. But can you really point to the defensive strides you made, and really how much of a point of emphasis this off season it was for you guys to focus on that side of the ball? Does that discount the last 12 minutes of the game? <laughs> talking about defensive strides. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So discount the last 12 minutes of this game because there was no defense played by us in the last 12 minutes of the game. Um, 
Uh, we've made a lot of strides defensively, and I think, you know, th there's always a misconception when you play fast and you score a lot of points that you don't play defense. People think that they're uh, binary, that somehow that if you score and play fast that you don't defend, and it's really a very uneducated opinion. Basketball is the one sport out of all sports that everything is tied together. Like, you have to, if you're bad, if you're bad defensively, you can't be good offensively. There's no way because you're taking the ball to the net all the time. Like when our offense slowed down the second half, it was because we weren't getting stops. In the first half, we're getting a ton of stops, just allowed us to get out in transition. And if you're if you're if you're good offensively and you're scoring a bunch and you're taking good shots, you're going to be good defensively. If you turn the ball over, you compromise your defense. Taking bad shots, you compromise your defense. Your defense is going to suffer for your bad offense. And if your offense is bad, you know, if your defense is bad, your offense suffers, right? So, I mean, this is just the way it is. And so we've always been and will be um, a defense first program. But we want to be great at both. Um, we want to play fast and we want to play free. <coughs> but we want to certainly be a team that, you know, uh, you know, competes defensively. We, we have tried to recruit and build a roster that's more in line with how we want to play defensively in terms of being able to switch a lot of stuff and length and contest. And we put together a roster on both sides of the floor that is more in line with, with how we want to play. Last year, we had to play a little differently <coughs> than I had at, at LMU and had I had previously, but you have to play with you know the, the hand you're dealt. That's the way it goes. Um, and we, we did, but I think this year hopefully is 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 more uh, emblematic of you know how we how we want to do it. And I think our defense for us to be good and for us to compete uh, for Valley championships, uh, we have to be not just a good defensive team. We got to be an elite defensive team. And it's much harder to be. Uh, and you got to be much more connected, I think, to be an elite defensive team than you do to be an elite offensive team. And that's going to be the foundation of everything we do moving forward. It'll be be great defensively, and if that if we're that that'll allow us to be great offensively. If we're mediocre or below defensively, it's, we're never going to be what we can be offensively. Been 37 years, 85 since ISU's put 100 on a team, a D1 team in a game. Were you uh, pursuing that basketball career or tennis career back then? <laughs> 85? Yeah, I was, I was tennis. I was tennis at that time. I was tennis at that time. I was, yeah, I didn't realize it's been that long. Jeez, yeah, I was tennis. I had hair. I was a lot thinner. It's about this height, so everything was about is about uh, the same. Everything was pretty much status quo, just much much thinner and more hair. But uh, yeah, I was I was straight tennis at that point, and uh, never would have imagined I'd be coaching basketball. So who who would have thunk I'd be in Terre Haute and and coaching hoops uh, a mere uh, what is that uh, 37 years later? So I'm giving away my age now. So but uh, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, that's 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 incredible that it's been that long. But um, hopefully we're a team that, you know, we have the capabilities of doing this. And I think, you know, again, offensively, I told them, you know, it wasn't a night where we made 23s either. You know, I think we can shoot the ball at a much higher clip. We were we were we shot the ball below average from three. So, you know, I think we have a chance to, to hopefully I'm not saying we'll put up 100 or on a regular basis, but hopefully this won't be an anomaly. Hopefully it won't be another 37 years.